on and bless the Lord, somebody. Glory to your name. We do honor and magnify God for all of his goodness and mercy that he has bestowed upon us, allowing us this special privilege to be able to come into his presence once again. And you know, it, it means something to be able to come and to worship the true and the living God. Because in this day and time, there's a lacking of true worship. And the thing about it is, and people are not sorrowful or pitiful about not giving God true worship. But they're more satisfied with just giving God anything. I would like to call your attention to the book of 2 Thessalonians, the, the second chapter. <clears throat> and Paul is dealing with, with some things and he's telling them of some things that are, are to come. Verse 3, let no man deceive you by any means. For because that day shall not come except there shall be a falling away first. And that the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. And so we know that he's beginning to talk about the apostate out. But now I want to... Take us to verse number 10. He said, but which becometh women professing godliness. No, no, I'm, I'm in Timothy. Okay. Verse number 10. And with all deceivingness of unrighteousness in them that perish. The reason being is because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved and for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they may that they should believe a lie and that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but has pleasure in unrighteousness because they believe not the truth. Because they had not a love of the truth. You can be seated. We live in a day and time that we cannot afford to take anything for granted. When he had forewarned us of what was about to take place that there was going to be an, uh, an apostate hour. And that was going to be a great falling away first. He let us know that before that day come, before Jesus Christ returned, before the great day come, that the, there are some things that are going to take place. And, and, and so we know that there is a strong indication of that that day is at hand. Because we're seeing these things transpire. And the biggest reason. And you, you're looking at. Apostasy. People are falling away from the things. That they once upon a time. Was loyal to. People that was loyal to the word of God. Loyal to the holiness. And the righteousness of God. Now they have forsaken that. They're going back to things that's not going to be beneficial to them. They, they, in, in other words, we don't want true worship now. <clears throat> we don't want true worship. We don't want to worship God like he said. In, that's in accordance with spirit and in truth. But the church now is not geared, for them, geared to true worship now. For the most part, all the churches uh, is about now is entertainment. 
And people are not going to church now to worship God. They are going to church now to be entertained. And, and so, it, you know, it's, it's sickening. When people call this worship, we had a high time in the Lord because we gave way to entertainment. And so now, you, you know, when you go to Nehemiah 8, the people assembled before the water gate. And, and they weren't calling for the choir. They wasn't call, calling for the praise dancers and the praise team and, and, and all of these folks. They wanted them to bring unto them the book of the laws of Moses. They wanted to hear the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. But because people have not received the love for the truth. Then, then this, is, this is okay. You can let the praise dancers dance and let the singer sing and, and all of this stuff. And then let the preacher get up with a bunch of foolishness. They're not getting up with the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. And see what we need more so in this hour is the truth. You know, why is truth needful and necessary? Let, let's look at what truth does. According to St. John 8.32, you shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. According to St. John 17.17, 17, Father, sanctify them through thy word because thy word is true. And so, this word has the ability to cleanse, it has the ability to sanctify you, to set you apart from the world. Even though you're in the world, you're set apart from the world. And, and you know, I, I love this, this gospel because it has transforming power. And, and this is, you know, you don't see this and you don't hear of this in churches anymore. Now God, the transforming power of the word of God. Now, let, let, let me help us to understand transforming power. According to St. John 3 and 3 and, and, and verse 5, you must be born again. You got to be transformed. Your life has to be changed. And then we go to 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. This that transforming power. This gospel, when you get it down on the inside, it does not leave you bound. Can I get a witness up in here? Can you hear David in Psalms 119 and 11? Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. Don't tell me you got the word of God in your heart and you still sinning. Romans 6, 1 uh, one and two, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? That grace may abound, God forbid. And how shall we that are dead to sin? Live any longer therein. This word has awesome power. And this is why people are mixed up and messed up because they are going to church now. I just want to be entertained. I, I, I don't want nobody to, to preach unto me the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. And let me tell you something. Saints, if we don't have that Matthew 5 and 8 mentality, that hunger and thirst for righteousness, now God, I just, you, you want, don't just sing about I need more and more. Now God, I, just, I want more of your righteousness, God. I got to become more and more like Jesus. If you don't get this unadulterated gospel in your life, your life will not be transformed. Choir singing, I don't care how melodious their voices are, cannot transform your life. Only the gospel. And let me tell you something. The gospel is not what these folks singing. Go ye into all the world and sing the gospel. Now, he said preach the gospel. 
to every creature. And so when you preaching this thing just like it is, I God, it, it transforms lives. It, it causes people to see themselves. It causes people to become convicted in their heart. And then let me tell you something. If you want to know whether it's the gospel or not, it, 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 the mandarin stick, if it won't convict, it will not convert. It's just as simple as that. If this gospel is not bringing you, my God, to godly sorrow, you will never repent. And so when the individuals see themselves and good as God been to us and the sacrifice that God has paid, my God, for mankind that they might not perish but have everlasting life. And I know I got God loved us so much that he gave his son. His son loved us so much that he gave his life that you and I might not die and go to hell but have everlasting life. Bless him up in here, somebody. You know, the Bible said that in that day there are going to be seven women that take hold of one man. They said, listen, let us just be called by your name. Uh, We're we going to do everything else. You just let us, let us be called by your name. And this is the way the church is. Just, God, just let her be called by your name. We want to live like we want to live. Come on and talk back to me. Uh, God, we want to sack up. We want to smoke dope. We want to suck on cigarettes. Uh, God, we want to put a little a bullet of wood and, and, and Kodiak and skull brother. All you skull brothers and skull sisters going to hell. With your teeth brown as wood. With your nasty self. But this gospel has cleansing power. And people are running from the truth. They think about just going to these churches. My God, well, they, they are not saying anything about sin. You cannot preach Jesus Christ and him crucified. And somebody not become convicted in their heart. Come on here and talk back to me. My God, when you began to understand why Jesus died, he didn't die, and I don't care if you don't ever like it. He didn't die for nobody to hide eggs. He didn't die for nobody to exchange guilt. He didn't die for nobody to wear loud color clothes. My God, he died that you might not perish, but have everlasting life. <laughs> and it's sad. All of this word that God have given us, and people don't want to take heed to it. Verse number nine says, even him who's coming is after the working of Satan. With all power, with all power, signs and lying wonders. And he's coming with a spirit of deception. He's coming with a spirit to deceive the heart of the simple. And, 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 and the thing about it is, we know that he's coming. And the Bible said it ain't no marvel that even the ministers of Satan have transformed themselves into ministers of light. That they're acting just like they, they, they the real thing. And people, because they don't study the word of God, they think it's a game. Your soul is at stake. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Listen, the same thing is taking place now as it did in the days of Noah. Noah warned the people for 120 years. That it was going to rain. And, and you know because they had not had rain before upon the face of the earth. Somebody took it as a game. Somebody took it lightly. What is Noah talking about? He kept warning the folk that it's going to rain. A preacher of righteousness. But they didn't want to hear that. They didn't want to take heed. My God to the warning. My God of Noah. But after a while. When Noah entered into the ark. And the door was shut. Then it began to rain. Now it wasn't that mist that they were accustomed to. That's come up from the, from the ground and watered the ground. Now it was coming from the firmaments of the heaven. And my God, after, after five days, it still wasn't too high. After ten days, it started looking a little funny now. Water began to stand. Now you're looking at 20 days. You're looking at 30 days. My God, water, the water rising. It's rising. It's rising. And my God, and people are, are dying and beginning to be destroyed. But they had opportunity to get it right. But they took it as a game. 
They took it as a game, just like the people are doing it today. They're taking worship as a game. But let me tell you something. You are not worshiping Baal. You are not worshiping some idol. You are worshiping the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. My God, he deserves our very best because God has been too good to us for us not to worship him. My God, according to his expectation, and that is in spirit and in truth. But people going to church, no change, no change. But see, God's church is so that you can hear a word that will convict you. And if it doesn't convict you, it will continue to perfect you. It will continue to show you yourself. It will continue to show you imperfections in your life and you don't have no problem. You just get it right. And so I'm not looking for somebody, my God, to overlook my mess. I'm looking some, for somebody to tell me the truth and nothing but the truth. So help me, God. I don't need nobody lying to me. I need a real man of God that's standing up and preaching the whole counsel of God. Because if I hadn't heard the truth, I go, oh, yes, I was in the AME church. My God, but I was still homonging. I was still smoking my dope. I was popping my pill. I was still doing all of this stuff. But oh, my God. And I heard the gospel of the kingdom. It resonated in my spirit. And say, that's what you need. That's what you need. And I'm so glad that I hearkened unto the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. Because that's what it took to save me. That's what it took, my God, to deliver me from all of my sin. My God, and to set my feet on that solid rock of Jesus Christ. Somebody ought to bless him. Listen, y'all can have all of this old, this old junk y'all call church with all of this mess. You the choir can sing from the time y'all get in to the time y'all dismiss. And y'all can have that. But I want the gospel. I want the truth and the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help me God. And let me tell you something. My God, people are fearful of this thing. They are running from the truth because the truth convicts. My God, the truth show you yourself. And somebody want to feel justified in their mess. You ain't saying nothing. My God, you got preachers. Oh yeah, they're great orators. They're not, they not God's preachers. My God, just like Herod. And the people say, oh, he don't speak like a man. He speak like a God. He was a great orator. But my God, the truth was absent. You need somebody, my God, with truth dripping off their lips. The truth protruding out of their mouth. They're crying louder. They're spinning out. They're lifting up their voice like a trumpet and showing men and women, boys and girls, their sins and their transgression. You got to show it to them. You got to show people that what they're doing is wrong. And God, you can't just make folk think that, listen, come down and give your heart to God. And God, I got news for you. God don't want your heart, don't want your hand either. He wants your body. He wants you to present your body unto him as a living sacrifice because God want to walk in you. He want to talk in you. He want to be your God and he wants you to be his son and his daughter. And see, people don't want God. I got to walk in them. They don't want God to talk in them because if God own your body man you can't be laying up with that woman that's not your wife woman when God own your body you can't be laying up with that man that you're not married to. I gotta, can I just preach right there? According to 1 Corinthians 7, 1 and 2, now concerning the thing, wherever I wrote unto you, it is good for a man not to touch a woman, but nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, have his own wife, have his own wife, and that's feminine. And let every woman have her own husband. Have her own husband. That's masculine. We got to preach it like that because we got some nasty folks out there. We got some perverted folks out there. But let, let me get back to this word. <laughs> and with all deceivingness of unrighteousness to them that go into hell. And the reason they're going to hell is because they receive not the love of the truth. They 
receive not a love for the truth. And I'm telling you here today, you got to love this truth. You got to love it. This word going to find you. It going to cut your flesh. And you lift your hand to God and say hallelujah in the house. Because you want all of this stuff in your life. Because you want it out. You want God. Whatever imperfections in my life. God get it out. Lord deliver me from everything. My God that does not please you. Now watch this. Because they receive not a love of the truth. If you don't receive a love for the truth, you can't be saved. If you don't receive a love for the truth, you cannot be saved. If you think you can be saved any other way other than the truth, if you don't, if you don't receive a love for the truth, you cannot be saved. Now watch this. You shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. That's the only thing that's going to set you free. So if you don't receive a love for the truth, you will never be free from what you're bound by. And so it's going to take the word of God. According to St. John 15 and 3, you are cleansed through the words that I have spoken unto you. This word has cleansing power. And so anytime you take this word and ingest it, thy, thy word have a hid in my heart. That I may not sin against thee. Now look what he said in Psalm 119 and 9. Where with us shall a young man, a young man, young woman, uh, uh, either an old man and an old woman, and everything in between, cleanse their way, but by taking he there unto according to the word of God. You got to take heed according to the word. You can't just hear a word. You got to do what the word of God said. You got to find yourself, my God, not being conformed to this world, but being transformed by the renewing of your mind. You cannot be a Christian and have your old mind. My God, you got to have a new mind. What mind is that, Bishop Thomas? It's the mind of Christ. It's the very nature of God. I got dwelling on the inside of you. Okay, and since you said the mind of Christ, Christ. What kind of mind did he have? He had a mind to please the Father. And my God, you ought to wake up in the morning. You want to have a mind to please the Father. When you lay down at night, you got a mind to please the Father. Can I get a witness up in here? I just want God, my God, to be pleased with me. I want him to look at me like he looked at Job. Have you considered my servant Job? I got he lived a life that was pleasing and acceptable in the sight of God. And every one of us, from the rise and the sun, I got to the going down of the sand. I got we ought to live a life. I got that pleasing and acceptable unto God. <laughs> See, when folks are messing up, they don't want to hear this. No, no, they don't want to hear the bishop crying out, My God, against whole manga. They don't want to hear the bishop crying out against hoeing. They don't want, oh, no, y'all don't want to hear. He didn't have to go there. Yes, I did. You went there. I wasn't a homemonger, I wouldn't have to be, I wouldn't have to say nothing about the homer. If you weren't homer, I wouldn't have to say nothing about the whore. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said whore. The whole. <laughs> the whole. <laughs> you know, well, this is a hip hop generation. And you, you, you know, they, they don't use proper pronunciation of the word. So I just, I say the hip hop version, whole. They, they, they know what that is. What they nasty to say. And see, this is the gospel that are called men's and women's lives to be transformed. And see, that's what sin is. The acronym, stop it now. You stop sucking on cigarettes. You stop drinking beer, whiskey, and wine. You stop popping pills. You stop sucking on, the, uh, on, on, on this, uh, uh, these squares, the, the, the roach. Sucking on the straight shooter. Come on here and talk to me. Your life can be transformed and you can live a life that's pleasing and acceptable in the eyesight of God. I go, we are not preaching, my God, to make folk feel bad, but I want you to become convicted in your heart. I got that you have a mind to change. 
I don't care how depressed you get. I'm, I'm going to preach it. I'm going to tell you about hell. I'm going to tell you about sin. Because that's my job. That's my job. I can't tell you about John 3.16 and don't tell you about hell. That they might not perish. That they might not go to hell. And see the flip side of that, that you can have everlasting life. And so we got to preach it so they can have a mind. I got to choose whether I want to go to heaven or I want to go to hell. But God, if you don't never give them that opportunity, I got you just think that there's a pie in the sky. You just think that everything is all right. But the God that we serve, he's an awesome God. And my God, and he loved mankind so much. I got while we was yet sinners. While we were yet sinning, Christ died for the ungodly. While we were still doing our mess, he provided a way that we can come out of this junk. We can come out of this lifestyle. And let me tell you something. I don't care how much pressure we're under. I don't care what go or what come. But you still got them have a mind just to say, yes, Lord. It's not as I will, but thine will be done. Bless him up and heal somebody. How many of you know that it get tough sometimes? Y'all didn't know that? But they say, you're a Christian. You really don't get the way, man. Let me help you out there. It was Jesus that said, my heart is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Now, if he had moments that weighed heavy on his mind, what about you and I? The Bible said he was testing in all manner, just like we are, yet without sin. My God, even though we're going through something, my God, we still got to lift our hands to God and say, hallelujah, anyhow. My God, I don't care. He's not just a God that's in heaven. My God, but he's the God that went to us when we're in the valley. My God, so we can have some peace in the valley. My God, even though we're going through, my God, we'll still bless the Lord. Can you hear David say and it probably might have been one of those moments I got when he was in the cave all Adula and said, I'll bless the Lord at all times. And do I have anybody in the house that'll bless the Lord at all times? My God, in the high times and the low times, I'll lift my hand to God and say, hallelujah, anyhow. I got sometime you're going to have to cry. I heard David say, weeping may endure for a night, but if you can just hold on to the morning, I got joy going to come. Look at your neighbor and say, joy going to come. Hey. Oh, glory to God. You know they had the song saying trouble in my way. I have to cry sometime. But that's all right. It's all right. But see the God that we serve. He knows how my God to dry every tear out of our eyes. He knows my God to have to give us joy in the midst of our sorrow. He knows how to pick us up. My God, when we are feeling down, all we got to do is look unto him. I got the author and the finisher of our faith. Oh, this is so consoling. I got in confidence. He said, we are not as though that are in the world without God and without hope. But since we got God, and let them know that we got hope. Hallelujah. That everything gonna be all right. I got, I don't care how dark it is, but I'm calling those things that be not as though they already were. I got, I'm gonna praise him. I'm gonna do like the Hebrew boys. I got, they should have wrote the song. Don't wait till the battle is over. You better shout now. I got in the fire furnace. My God, they were giving God the glory. My God, they gave him the glory on the outside. It's an old king. We are not careful to answer you concerning this matter. My God is the God that we serve. He's able. Look at your neighbor and say he's able. Oh, glory to God. And so God said, now you, 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 you tell him this here, that the God that you serve, he shall deliver out of the fire furnace. He's a God when you and I was in the fire. He's a God when you and I are sick. He's healing. Come 
on and bless him, somebody. Everything that we need is in our Jehovah Jireh. He's our provider. He keep on making a way out of nowhere. Oh, bless him, somebody. Hallelujah. Listen, the Bible said, if we faint in a day of adversity, he said, then our strength is nay small. But I know this, that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. How God, I call you to triumph. I call you to come forth with the victory. Come on and bless him, somebody. Even in the midst of all of this mess, in the midst of all this this. this confusion of religion I got when the church world is messed up when the church world have forsaken true worship they have forsaken true worship and now the church worship has been replaced by entertainment come on talk to me I got they 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 got all this in the, they, you got praise dancers in the church you got mimes in the church you had mimes in there before, before you brought them up in there. They, they were acting before you brought them up in there. All they were doing is identify with the other mimes sitting in the seat. But see, God got people that are lively stones in the building. God got people. They are not playing. They are not pretending. When God said, be ye holy, he didn't say, try to be holy. He said, be ye holy because I am holy. I want you to be just like me. I want when people see you, my God, they behold my handiwork. They see what I done done in your life. They see what I done brought you from. Anybody know what I'm talking about? My God, God brought us out of darkness into the marvelous light and that's that's why you bless him with all of your heart, with all of your mind, with all of your soul, and with all of your strength. Uh, my God, that think about it, think about it, think about it. You and I could have been dead, my uh, God, sleeping in our grave. But the long suffering of God, my uh, uh, God, the grace of God, uh, the patience of God, my uh, God, it kept us uh, and, until God gave us the opportunity until we say, yeah. Hey. Yes, Lord. He kept us to that moment. He kept reaching out. He kept crying out. Oh God, that we'll come. Come out to me. Oh, you labor in heaven later. And I'm so glad that I said yes, Lord. I wouldn't want to do it. My God, that turn a deaf ear. But I said yes, Lord. I said yes. What must I do to be saved? People that they think if I just got my name on the church roll, if I just go to church, then I'm all right. No, ma'am, you don't understand. The devil goes to church. When Jesus was in the church, he up there preaching. The devil said, why did you come to Tom Mills before all time? The devil went to church. And then let me tell you something. Jesus was proclaiming truth. And this is why you got not another devil's children going to church. And when they, they just say, I don't like him. I go because he, he talk about folks. I'm not talking about folks. I'm talking about sin. And you just happen to be one of the people that sin is in. But if you get sin out, you can say preacher, preacher, preacher. You can say amen. You can say hallelujah. Once you get it right, I God, you can say Amen. Because see, that was the time I didn't want to hear him talking about smoking, though. I didn't want to hear him about, talk about drinking and fornicating. I didn't want to hear that. You know why? Because I was caught up in that man. But when I got my life right, my God, I said, preach it, preach it. I can say amen. My God, I wasn't convicted anymore because I was delivered. And let me help you out right here. When God brings you out, he's able to keep you out. Jude 24 said, now unto him that's able to keep you from falling. 
He's able to keep you from falling. He's able to keep you from going back to those things. My God, that he has delivered you from. The thing that he done brought you out of. And the things, the yokes that have been broken in your life. And the yokes that have been destroyed. He's able to keep you now from going back to those things. You don't have to go back to that man. My God, that was abusive to you. My God, physically, mentally, and verbally. My God, you don't have to go back to that. My God, but Jesus Christ, he's the best thing that ever happened to me. And he can be the best thing that ever happened to you. But you got to love him with all of your heart. You got to love him with all of your mind. You got to love him with all of your soul. And you got to love him with all of your strength. Bless him up in here, somebody. Listen, it's not about scripture no more. It's not about the word of God anymore. It's all about entertainment. And the world, listen, loving now, they loving church now. That's why you got mega churches because the, it's, it's geared to entertainment. They bring in one bomb after another. They don't bring men to God no more. No, no, we, we just want somebody that's going to entertain us. <laughs> Listen, I read in one of my devotionals. A young pastor, they was having a revival and the speaker that was supposed to come and conduct a revival, something happened, he wasn't able to make it. So the young pastor called an old retired Baptist preacher. And he came in there, he preaching, you must be born again. He came in there and tell him that, you know, preaching against sin and all of this stuff. And while he was preaching, the, the pastor was furious. He was upset. He was mad. But when he asked the young man, Asked the old man about it. He confronted him about it. He let him know this is the Bible. And he said, but nobody never told me that. And you got a lot of preachers in the pulpit. All they in there for is an a anniversary. All they in there is just what they can get out of the people. They mama called, daddy sent now, God, they are not men that that's hearts that have been touched by God. Now, God, they don't care anything about the people. They just like the honorarium. They just like the money. <laughs> but the real man to God is like the old football players. Not like these, these little old feminine players now. They get a hangnail. They got to be out a few weeks. But the old football player, that's, you know, for the love of the game. Man, we'll pray with broke limbs and all of that. Just, just tape me up and send me back in there. Wasn't making a whole lot of money. But you got these, these million dollar crybaby. All of these million dollar crybaby. Multi-million dollar crybaby. And, and so now that they, they, because they don't love the they they not committed to the game. They committed to the paycheck. But those old players, they were committed to the game. They were committed to the game. And I'm saying that to say this, you got men of God that's committed to preaching and teaching the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. They are not in this here for the money. They are not in this here for the mighty dollar. Bless them somebody. <laughs> because somebody needs the truth. And you know, and it doesn't make sense. Folks calling these old high dollar TV preachers. They don't have a message to, of deliverance. And then let me, why not I, I put that word out there? Let me make that plain. Deliverance ministry is not getting up out of a wheelchair, throwing down crutches and all of that. Deliverance is delivering you from sin. Because then let me tell you something. Can I just tell you? Jesus said, better for you to enter into heaven, man, 
a blind lane than to enter into it whole. So it ain't talking about that. They got up out of a wheelchair. This is a deliverance man. Man, I see more folks, my God, that run up and down the street. They, they still, they hadn't stopped doing anything. But if they are not delivered from their sin, it didn't say Jesus came to deliver you from a wheelchair. It didn't say Jesus came, my God, to, to deliver you from this disease, that disease. He came to deliver you from sin. Because it doesn't matter if that, 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 that body is maimed or lame. My God, you're going to get a new body anyway. If we don't get back to the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ, we got a deliverance out. Every time you come together, there ought to be a deliverance out. Somebody that bound in sin ought to be getting delivered. Because if you got them kept in a wheelchair and they get them run around, do you tell them this? Listen. Go and sin no more. At least the worst come up on you. No, they don't tell them that. They too busy talking about, oh yeah, oh yeah, they, they, look what the Lord done done. And, and then you want all of the credit. You want all of the credit. Uh -uh, no, no, this is the Lord's doing. And it's marvelous in our eyes. I pray to God, open blinded eyes. I pray to God, raise the dead. I'm praying to God, heal the sick. My God, but let me tell you something. The ministry is geared to the getting poor, delivered from their sin. If you got a bunch of parasites in the church, they want something for nothing. They want God to do something for them when they're not doing anything for God. Come on and bless him, somebody. Amen. Let me get back to this word. Verse number 10 again. And with all deceivingness of unrighteousness and them that perish because they received not a love for the truth. That they might be saved. The only way you're going to be saved is through the truth. Don't, don't get bitter. Don't get upset. My God, get saved. He come to verse 11 and say, for this call, for this reason. God shall send them strong delusions. Strong, powerful delusion. That they should believe a lie. That they all might be damned, destroyed, who believe not the truth. Uh oh, but they have pleasures in unrighteousness. Do y'all see that pleasure in unrighteousness? Y'all know pleasure in unrighteousness? But the Bible also said the pleasures of sin is only for a season. It gonna, it, it, everything is fine for a little while. They're just like somebody, my God, that they, they, they cheating on their, their, their spouse. And the Bible said, be sure. Your sin shall find you out. It's going to find you out. It's going to find you out. And I don't care what no, anybody's doing. You know, you see Nazis, soldiers that was over a concentration camp 50, 60 years later. They convict them. And they lock them up in prison. Be sure your sin is going to find you out. You, I don't care what you're doing. It's going to find you out. And, and so I, whether somebody else find out or some disease, you cheating on your spouse. You cheating on this one. And now some disease is going to take you out. And some brother on, on the down low, they going both ways. And these, they, they, you know, these the women, they, they silly. You know, they out there because they got on starch and iron jeans a little, you know, got that, that, that stuff in their mouth that's decaying their teeth. That fake grill. That fake is that bohemian. Come on, talk to me. And so he's walking around that all this stuff. You, you think you got something. But you don't know he's a punk too. Sometimes he feel like a nut. Sometimes he don't. Want to feel like a man. Sometimes he want to be the one with his nasty sin. And so you, you, you got to be careful in this day and time. You, you, you know how you, how you say. You, but see you can, you can find a real man and a real woman in the true church.
If any of the Church of God in Christ parishioners, if y'all could answer this for me, I, 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 I am curious but before I go any further. Since <laughs> Bishop Blake con condoned homosexuality, uh, could they come in there with a dress on? Could they come in there dressed like a man dressed like a woman or a woman dressed like a man? I'm just curious. I'm, I'm just curious. I'm just throwing that out there. <laughs> and, and, and you got that 200 plus mile man. Praise, praise you. I got a problem with that. But, I, no, I'm, but I'm, not, I'm not talking about me. I, I just wonder how y'all feel about that. All you devils going to hell. Because they have pleasures in unrighteousness. Have pleasures in unrighteousness. And so now we get to get, we got to go back to the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. And because people are not wanting this word just like it is. Listen, give me Isaiah chapter 30 beginning at verse 9 through 11. And somebody give me Jeremiah chapter thir chapter 5, verse 30 and 31. Read the book. <laughs> Holy Isaiah, let me tell you this. This is a rebellious people. Come on. Not only are they rebellious, but they're lying children. Listen, they have not pleasure in, unri in righteousness. They don't want to hear the law of the Lord, but they want to hear some foolishness. They want to hear some prosperity myth. But let me tell you something. It's not going to deliver you from your sin. I got the truth of God is the only thing that's going to set you free. But these people had pleasure in unrighteousness. Now what did they say? Come on. Now they, that typifies the church world today. They don't want to hear the law of the Lord. They don't want to hear what thus saith the Lord. But when you love God, this is the purpose of going to the house of God to hear the word of the Lord. <laughs> Read. This is the people saying to the seal. The, uh, don't pay no attention to what we're doing. Come on. Now they turn to the watchman, hey, see not to the watchman, to the prophet, don't tell us the truth. But tell us what? No, no, before that. We don't want the truth. Come on. Prophesy lies unto us. Don't tell us the truth. But prophesy unto us deceit. Prophesy lies unto us. Read. Get you out of the way. What path? I want you to get out of that straight and narrow path. I want you to get on Broadway. I want you to call that Holy One of Israel to the cease before. We don't want God. We don't want to hear about God. We want to come before him and we don't mind calling on him in the church, but we don't want him head of our life. Because when God is head of your life, the only reason that God is the head of your life is you have presented your body unto him as a living sacrifice. And when you have presented your body unto him as a living sacrifice, he can walk in you. He can talk in you. He can be your God. And you can be his son and his daughter blessing somebody. But hold it right there. You cannot be a child of God. You cannot be a child of God. My God, continue going to the club. You got so many drunk preachers. 
You got more drunk preachers that you can let a manger dog got fleas. And the people love to have it so. Come on, give me Jeremiah 5. 30 and 31. A wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. The prophets, prophets, prophets. The prophets prophesy deceit. They prophesy falsely. Come on. No, he didn't say the Jebusites. He didn't say the Canaanites. Now, God, he didn't say the Kenites. He said, my people, Israel, they love to have it so. And now, God, even today, I got in the church world. They love to have it so. They don't want them to touch away the gospel of Jesus Christ. But let me tell you something. And I'm telling every man of God, when you put the trap into your mouth, you better blow it. You better cry loud. And you better stand not. You better shout. Men and women, boys and girls, of their sins and their transgression. Show them what they're doing. It's wrong. So, bitch, why you preach like that? It wouldn't matter if Hebrew 9 and 27 wasn't in there. It is appointed unto man once to die. And if even that they just stopped that with a period, that would have been okay. But a calm is there. It is appointed unto man once to die. And after this, come the judgment. And he tells us that we all must appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And we must all give an account of every deed done in our mortal body, whether it's good or whether it's evil. We're going to stand before God. And we're going to give an account of every sin that we do. Everything that we're doing. Whether it's good or whether it's evil. My God, we're going to stand before God. And God going to reward us according to the lives that we live in. Every choice has a consequence. Come on, talk to me. Listen. There have been young ladies that were virgins. They allowed some slick talking will it to cause them to give up what God has given them. And the next thing you know, they got AIDS. Now your life is ruined. Your life is ruined. Because you're running around there and listening to some man. Let me tell you something. Can I just keep it real? Break it down. Break it down. How can you allow some man to lie to you? You're not crazy. Sadist. But you're not crazy. That man will lie to you. He'll tell you you're beautiful. You're so beautiful. 